Hello, hello, hello. Welcome hello. to a season, season, session, episode 11. I was about to say welcome to a chaotic <laughs> episode and I thought it's probably just me. No, no, just, no, a bit of chaos in my brain today. Um, yeah, welcome back to Free Flow, episode 11. Um, I keep thinking it's not episode 11, but it is episode 11. I don't know why my brain is Ooh. like... Different we're gonna have to do something when it's like a significant like i know 13 20 episodes or something oh 13 okay I feel like 13 because feminine energy baby okay yeah <laughs> i don't know what yet we'll forget we'll, we'll, we'll let so future slaughter and julia that's in on. two episodes time yeah <laughs> so I it'll be lot. fine yeah we'll, we'll figure something out we'll... yeah we should do something i think something yeah. special yeah, that would be cool. I like this plan. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> I'm like, woo, today, this evening. Um, Julia, what day of your cycle are you on? I should start this actually with a proper introduction. Sorry, guys. So welcome to episode 11 of Free Flow, where we are exploring the, uh, the five chambers of menstruation. I always want to say secrets. Um, we're exploring the five chambers of menstruation and um this is kind of a follow-on so today we're going to be looking at episode episode three. Oh my gosh today we're going to be looking at chamber three jesus louisa guys chamber three um having just looked at the oh, chamber one and two previously so chamber uh, one was our separation slash the void venture into the void uh session 10 was looking at chamber two which was the um surrender and we've got i put kind of womb whispers and menstrual messengers i feel like that kind of came through on the last one that <clears throat> we recorded the other day and then today yeah we're looking at um renewal slash home so the chamber of renewal i think is what uh, red school kind of coin it as in their training and oh, um this lovely. is yeah this is looking at renewal and kind of coming home to the self um Possibly, oh. mm, I do love this chamber a lot. I've had some really nice, juicy experiences with this chamber. So, yeah, before we dive in, uh, Julia, do you want to share what day of your cycle you're on? Yeah, I just grabbed my little book. Um, mm -hmm. I'm on day five. Mm -hmm. And although, although like, uh, intellectually, I think it, I'm still uh, having a period like the the sort of end of the period mm. so I would say oh I'm in winter but like in like kind of my heart like you know there's like intellectual and then the, the feet I'm not really sure like the head and the heart you know mm. like my feeling body feels like I'm in spring mm, and I okay. actually felt like I was in spring on about day three I was oh, just wow, like okay. so full of energy I was mm. like spring has sprung baby yeah so, <laughs> what did so you do just, with the energy Oh my gosh, I went, um, so we're, we're in this little village, so I just went and like walked around the village and there's this little outdoor exercise area and mm. I went and did like 20 sit-ups in a row. I've never, wow. I've never done 20 sit-ups in a row before on this, like they have all this stuff you can use, you know? Yeah, a bit like so I just really went and have all the equipment and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I did that and I nearly did a like a bar lift, which I've never been able to do before. And then I like, I took out the recycling and I took out the rubbish and I went and we went for a swim and we went and did this. I was just like, I've got to, I've got to go and do stuff. Mm, okay, <laughs> So I just, I just went with it and I thought, I know it's day three. So up here, I'm like, I'm on my period, I'm in my winter, but my body was just like, let's go, mm, baby. Okay. Okay. So, I feel like that will be really crazy. cool to see how you feel come uh in a summer because for me I used to do that all the time on my bleed and then I'd be absolutely exhausted come ovulation so I have it as a hard <laughs> and fast rule now obviously everyone's different you know guys we always talk yeah. about the the big red rule um but I have it as a rule now where I don't let myself uh do all of the things because it fucks me up but equally uh sometimes that's trickier but I tend to just yeah really hold and savor that energy um and I just rest some more Really? And I love it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Which is tricky, but actually it feels really, really good. Um, so I'm re gonna be re yeah, I'm really intrigued how you get on at the next kind of couple next of Next week I'm just gonna crash. Yeah. <laughs> well it'll be good to see, won't it? Because it's it is so interesting. And again, you know, it might be 
you know that it's different uh in different cycles and stuff as well but um definitely for me I used to just I think it's that you know when we spoke in episode must be episode two about kind of holding the tension of that energy and the resurgence of inner spring for me that's where I really have to like because otherwise I do just want to do all the things and um and I don't get that I actually don't get into the renewal chamber so it's interesting that you said that today because ah, that okay. for me has been the biggest difference with it which is cool because I feel like the last time we spoke it was day one and we were kind of talking about the yeah like sort of the surrender so I feel like these episodes yeah. have been quite nicely with where you, you've been at in your cycle um this time around um <laughs> so well planned yeah Not so well planned us. as we do so how are you feeling today yeah no, fine like I've yeah. since that since day three I've just been like Mm. bring ease bring in my awesome. step you know yeah <laughs> so I feel like as well it'll off. be interesting because it's like it's not um it's kind of all stuff that you've chosen to do rather than like you haven't had to like I don't know go to work for 12 hours or something so it's kind of like you, you know being yeah. kind of able to choose those things so even if it's been like swimming and stuff it's still like I don't know you don't have to do like a million things or they did do your sit-ups but you know I mean again it's just it's going to be interesting to see you know how it feels you know so I'm really uh I'm quite excited for you yeah. this, this uh this cycle um mm, okay cool what about, what about you I'm on cycle day 14 yes 14 um I'm definitely feeling um a bit of yeah ovulation pain on Friday when I was swimming and then this morning I went for a swim as well and I actually didn't feel it this morning at, during my swim but I did feel it when I got back and I was like, oh, my womb, <laughs> why? The middle Schmitz. I don't know how you say it. I feel like it's middle Schmitz <laughs> or Schmitz or something. I can never remember how you say it. And I yeah, yeah. never bothered to look it up before I record an episode. So episode uh, three, we'll probably mention that with the inner, inner summer stuff. But um, yeah, so basically just ovulation cramps. Um, yeah, kind of, yeah, a bit sore today. And again, I feel like I have those when I didn't rest enough in my bleed. So um, and last time ah, okay. it was like, the new job and stuff so it was just was not very restful also I was just stressing a lot more than I needed to so yes so I kind of um I'm not surprised I have ovulation cramps more this this time around um so but yeah you say you're in summer good. yeah I feel like I'm in summer yeah yeah definitely yeah I think I've got another couple of days of summer um I think I'm probably like maybe one or maybe one or two more days of ovulating and then um yeah and then in autumn doth come up or late summer for the late summer so um yeah but feeling yeah feeling pretty good um a little bit like scatty this evening but I think I just I had a cool that ran over from work and I was already hungry so it was more I think I was more like I just need to eat now um but yeah so um mm, yeah so um, chamber chamber three chamber three yeah so um yeah so chamber three I've got my notes here so again if people are if I end up putting this on YouTube and I'm looking that's why so um yeah chamber three the chamber of renewal um slash home and I've got a few notes I've got grounded whole and belonging um remembering of yourself and I also have Muladhara Chakra and the right to be here. So um, at some point I will be exploring some of the chakras. And I mean, I really love all the chakra work and I was obsessed with chakras and quite a few people um, who maybe will be listening will have come to my yoga classes. And I did lots of um, workshops on the chakras. I was very obsessed with them for a good couple of years before I found out about sort of more of the um, yeah cycle practice, really. So it's the cycle practice has kind of come along and almost kind of overtaken my yoga practice because I it really is just a deeper level for me and the, the chakras can really weave into that. So Muladhara chakra is the root chakra and it's kind of our right to be here and our kind of sense of this belonging. Um, so I think it kind of ties in really nicely with the right to be here. And also the idea of home, it's very much to do with, if you think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it's like kind of a, your base needs, like basic needs kind of getting met. So things like, you know, shelter, food, water, um, you know kind of those basic things in order to feel safe so if you when does maybe... it you usually happen this chamber well I think this is where with regards to the chambers so you could say you know you could say you could give a day for each I, I don't really I don't really think that's the best way to go because I think it again we're a bit like we discussed last time it's a bit like you're trying to pigeonhole the cycle that is a cyclical thing into like a very like boxed you know this day this day this day um for me I would say that for me if I've been able to 
um, separate in, in chamber one. And especially if I'm able to get into that chamber two of surrender, if I can let myself surrender, then I really can fall into the renewal. Um, so that third chamber. And I kind of ping pong a little bit between those kind of states, I'd say for like a day or two. If I've got the day off, I really can like really properly relax into it. Um, and then with the other, with the other, um, the other two chambers, I would say for me, I tend to kind of ping between the second chamber, the third chamber, and a little bit of the fourth chamber, which is um, visioning and vision quest, um, especially if I'm doing lots of journaling. So um, I find that, yeah, I kind of will ping, ping between them a little bit. The more you surrender and they can let go, the more juice you can get from it. So it for me, it really depends on um, does it fall on, you know, a, a, a Saturday or a Sunday? Um, and then, yeah, well, how, yeah, just how much I've been able to relax. Because if I'm on my ADHD medication, I don't notice it as much, for example. And if I'm having to work, I'm kind of having to be in my brain rather than in my body. So then I don't feel it as much. Um, yeah. So, so the, the separation is usually a bit before the bleed. your period starts. Mm -hmm. And then the surrender is once it started. Yeah, kind of the first then, day of the first day of bleed, and then the and then the renewal home really renewal. can be any any time. So it can be, you know, okay. if you're if you've got if I've got the day off and I'm maybe on day one or day two, and I've been able to really kind of just properly relax. Maybe I've had like a nice Epsom salt bath. Maybe I've got a lot of the time as well. I might do a bit of fasting, so I might have cacao in the morning. That's a really nice heart opener, so Anahata chakra opener. And then if I'm like feeling nice and safe and grounded, so again bringing the the root chakra Muladhara chakra in. Um, then it's really nice. Like if you feel really safe and grounded, then you're more likely to, you know, um, have like a, a heartfelt experience, a more heart open experience, being able to receive. Um, so I think that, yeah. So I think that um, for me, it really depends on, yeah, if I'm able to, if I feel like I'm able to drop into that space. And it, again, it's kind of it is the surrender, so it can't really be forced. You know, sometimes I'm like, oh, it's just not, I'm not quite able to do it, and it's really annoying because I want to just drop into it. But I know that the more I try, the less it's going to happen. So it's kind of that, um, again, a little bit like we mentioned last time was just like maybe there's some gentle activities that you can quote unquote do to get you into that space. So again, for me, it would be like having some cacao or maybe sometimes I'll fill up a thermos and I'll go for a little walk in the um, the countries, countryside bit in my house. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll have a hiccups. I'll have a little walk and, um, and drink that in nature because that's really nice. Especially this is for, the, for the sorry renewal this is... but kind of honestly for 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 my bleed these are just things that I love to do ah, okay. and I think that this okay. really helps you to drop into those spaces to go a little bit deeper so it's not really like I'll drink cacao to be able to you know be in the third chamber it's really just these are some activities that help me to surrender <laughs> as someone that's very very busy is a, a recovering workaholic and also has ADHD. So my brain's just like, can't relax, gotta do all of the things, blah, blah, blah. So for me, it's really that what things can I kind of prompt myself to do that will help to fall into that space more easily. A bit like, you know, a morning routine or an evening routine, you know? What's something that I can do in the evening? Well, probably not gonna sit there with matchsticks in my eyes trying to watch a, a scary movie because that's not gonna help my brain wind down for sleep. So it's kind of just using. A common sense is not so common, but you know, what are some gentle practices? Maybe it's a yin yoga, maybe it's just lying in a bath, maybe it's just lying on the bed and having a daydream. Like whatever it is, where can you allow yourself those little pockets? And if you're working, can you allow yourself a little pocket? You know, on, on my lunch break often that will be, okay, well, I'll just have something like a soup that's quick to heat up, but then I might just lie, uh, I might lie in bed for like even just like three minutes. Sometimes I'm like, I've got three minutes, so I've got to be back at, you know, back on the phones. But I might just set an alarm for like two minutes and just lie down with my eyes closed just just to, again, kind of regulate the nervous system and just to drop in and give myself those little, little, you know, parts of it. Even again, that 1% rule, you know, or 5% rule. I can never remember one of the percent rules of Red School where we're just trying to give ourselves that little bit. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I, I, but I find, yeah, when I'm able to really do that, um, I've got here, I've got the love and bliss hormone oxytocin and then the mother hug. I think the mother hug is something that has come through from the Red School uh, book, Wild Power, and also from the training last year. But really the, um, when we can, well, I'll read my notes actually, because this will be rather than me trying to words. 
<laughs> so I've put divine meets earthly body, oxytocin activated through womb contracting during bleed. So the womb contracts during our during our bleed, and that releases oxytocin. It's the pain. Yeah, hence the pain. And hence the, if we can, and obviously this is not for everyone, and I say it with a pinch of salt, because I know that I think when, when people, ideally, in an ideal world, we can allow ourselves to rest. The more I rest, the more I surrender and drop in, the less likely I am also to take a painkiller. I really try not to take painkillers when I'm on. I'm also very grateful that I, you know, I don't uh, experience insane amounts of pain. So, I mean, rarely I yeah. do, but it's very rare. Um, so, yeah, Wait, I mean, I you know don't, some... you don't regularly have painful periods. Is that what you're saying? I mean, I have them. They're painful, but they're enough for me to not have painkillers most of the time. Oh, I see. Again, if okay. I'm working, I'm more irritable. I'm more resentful because I'm like, I wish that women didn't have to, or I wish that people that menstruated didn't have to work if they didn't want to because Moon Day should be a whole thing. Blah 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 blah. blah. I'm feeling resentful. <laughs> Girl, whole other I episode. I might take a painkiller. Yeah, yeah. Whole other episode. Um, but I, I tend to just have yeah, like yeah. a hot water bottle. A bit like today, you know, I didn't have any painkillers for the um, ovulation pain. I just put a heated. A hot water bottle on because often because I'm sitting as well often that for me is enough to for it to not really be that noticeable if I've done that and again it's that oxytocin that kind of washes over so even on times when it's been a bit a bit a bit more intense not when it's been really bad and I've been like on the floor you know that's when I've, I'm like yeah have, have the painkillers or CBD or whatever it is that you do but if you can um if you can literally just lie in your lovely you know red sheets and you can just occasionally sometimes I'll just have a bit of music on for my inner water uh, in a winter playlist and I'll just like move a little bit or sometimes I'm just lying there resting and I'll just kind of like drift off and I'll kind of have this lovely like um these like washes of the mother hug it's like a big hug and it just kind of comes and it's just like it's kind of like washing over you and it's just so 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 <laughs> wonderful really yeah. feels amazing and it's very rare that I've been able to have it. And I think that's why I do get so resentful of having to like work uh, in a non, mm. uh, in a non-cyclical way. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so totally ignoring the really... cycle. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Because my body's like, I just want to rest. So that for me is when I've had some really lovely, it's just so, it just feels so, so, so good. It's hard to explain. It's a bit like uh don't do drugs kids but it's a bit like if you ever have ecstasy and then you get that lovely and you're kind of coming up some of my my old party friends will know what I mean it's kind of like that but more pure or it's a bit like um I don't know when you're kind of at the drunk stage of your friends where you're kind of all drunk and, and squishy and it's maybe like a, a little red wine warming drunk but you're not like you know hammered yet it's that nice like oh it's just a it's just but it's very Fuzzy. just you know very everything's pure. sort of softer and fuzzier yeah softer and just um yeah I don't know if it's fuzzy I think it's just very soft and it's like yeah like a, just a big mama bear hug so um that this, is just really beautiful when you say about the contracting womb uh, releases oxytocin mm. is that what you I said? think also like in childbirth I think that also releases oxytocin okay. I haven't had children so myself and I also don't mm -hmm. know if that would change if you didn't um have is it an epidural if you didn't have like pain pain relief whilst you were giving birth I wonder if some women who haven't had pain relief when they've given birth have have had the oxytocin washes because I guess it's your body's way you know like years and years and years ago when we didn't have pain relief I guess it's your body's way of being able to actually handle pushing something out <laughs> yeah, yeah. Case, you know to have the oxytocin so they're having those washes and those waves and and they say that often when you when you've given birth and you hold your baby like a lot of women it's it's obviously a massive rush of yes yeah. all the may oxytocin probably other hormones yes and it makes you totally forget what mm. just happened yes, and all that yeah. pain and you're just so mm. in love with this little baby that yes, you yeah. are happy to get pregnant all over again <laughs> yeah and then I kind of I also wonder if people who experience postnatal depression etc I wonder if they don't feel that as intensely or I wonder if there's something there hormonally mm. that happens as a part of other things but I yeah I'm always quite curious if anyone listening has had children or has had any experience with that then that would be so interesting because um we haven't had yeah. children so I, we're just kind of speculating but um, experience yeah but my but but I guess when you were saying that about it really it, it's like that to me is almost the reverse of what I 
think is happening. Like, you know, you because like some of it you can feel that like if you get really intense cramps, you can mm. you can almost feel that happening, the the like contraction, right? Yeah. You can feel yeah. the movement there. Mm. And then you feel the pain. And when you're saying, oh, oxytocin release, I'm like, is it though? <laughs> It's like that's really interesting to mm. I didn't know that, that again in, in Wild Power they talk about it because there was a there's a lady in there that had really, really painful periods. And um, you know, the idea of saying try not to take medication is probably like, oh my god, you know, absolutely not, which I do get because I I've had a couple, you know, I feel like every couple of years I do have a really, 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 really intense painful one. And I think, oh my goodness, like people who have this every single month, you know, oh my gosh. But um, but it is kind of that it's almost like going back to sort of the the womb whispers or the menstrual messengers. It's kind of like, what's your body telling you? Because for me, the pain is much less when I'm resting, when I'm doing what my body needs. Oh, my Internet connection is unstable. Hopefully it is fine. Um, But um, so I think a big part of it is, again, it's like we're not we don't live or it's a practice to live more cyclically in the world that we live in at the moment. So. I think that when you go against that, that comes about in lots of different ways, whether it's you develop a, an addiction to something, whether you uh, get really painful periods, or maybe you get migraines because you're using a screen. You know, there's so many different things that can come through. And I feel like it's almost like a an ailment of living in a way that we're not really supposed to, I guess. That's... Okay, so so mm. maybe it's almost your body's way of saying lie down <laughs> yeah a bit like last Just time I, think lie down. I kind of said yeah I think in the last episode we kind of mentioned that you know if you don't stop and surrender your body will find a way to um I think Carly from Moon Forest Flow that's her um Instagram panhandle I think she has some really great experience with this but she's spoken about she did um uh she really helped me a lot with my cycles initially before I'd you know got really into all the red school information and um she I think with hers I mean you'd have to go on her page but she does speak openly about it and I think her you know her body got to a point where she was just kind of she was in bed for a really long time um just laid up and I think a part of that was for just pushing and pushing and pushing through obviously it's always gonna be lots of different factors right we can't just say it's one thing but I think that cumulatively you know adds up um yeah, I mean, for me, yeah, you know, my brain, if I get super spacey, I'm just like, oh, I, or, or, you know, I'm just getting stressed over something I don't need to. Often I'm like, oh, okay, have I just, like, where am I at in my cycle? Like, yesterday, you know, I was ovulating. I went to my dad and my stepmoms, had a really nice walk, had some really nice food, but it was definitely like a slow, really nice slow Sunday. And I deliberately made sure I had that over the weekend because I know with ovulating, as we spoke about in the in a summer episode, um, and a bit with the via positive and negative but those are those are moments menstruation and ovulation I feel like those are little the north and the south pole where you do just need to pause whereas before I'd be like I'm ovulating so I can do all the things and now I'm like no 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 I still need to kind of pause on this moment so yeah yeah okay um, so so yeah. maybe if you do you listen to those messages like mm-hmm. the womb whispers or the menstrual message or whatever you want to call them and you do what like your body is guiding you to do then you get that real yes. benefit yes. of whatever hormone is being released because yeah not h- hormones aren't good or bad Mm-mm. they're all they all have a helpful thing and an mm. unhelpful thing really um yeah. and it just depends yeah what mm. you're doing at the time <laughs> yeah 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 how you can drop into that and it might not be straight away you know it can kind of take some practices and again it's kind of having that you know space in your diary or your life to be able to do it as well so um yeah but I think Mm. it's worth I mean that's the juice of this chamber is really the that scent that mother hug and that kind of that sense of um Mm. yeah just kind of being very at home just being like oh okay I have a right to be here it's safe for me to be here you know I'm allowed to rest um I mean, some people, yeah, some people do also just enjoy not speaking. There was a lady on the course last year with Menstrual Leadership Programme and she, um, she'd um, managed to sort it. I mean, she, I think she must have been with her job for quite a while, but she, um, I can't remember what she did, but she uh, was able to have, I think most of the time she was able to have days one, two and three of her cycle off. And she said she just wouldn't talk. She would just wow. have it off. Wow. And, uh, she would just talk as little as possible. Mm. Which kind of blends into a practice Amazing. called... 
is it Maya? No. Moya? No. Something. There's a practice in yoga where you just uh, have, uh, where you practice silence, which I did. I can't remember what it's called now, but it's, uh, yeah, but it's a very interesting uh, build up of really nice energy that you get. I that one. Yeah. I, I, we've got, um, it's only we've got 10 minutes, Julia. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I like the no speaking. I do think, yeah, like especially on days one and two, mm. I could probably quite happily not talk to anyone. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't Sometimes mean I don't have really to be with other people. Words but... as well, I think. Yeah, like no. conversation. You're kind of forcing yourself. You're like, mm. okay, well, it's polite to talk to people, mm. <laughs> and yeah, not just yeah. ignore them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, nope, just uh, keep them. Yeah, it's true. I think um, it's really nice to kind of have those yeah those moments where you can practice you know having some silence and seeing how that feels and again it's just holding that energy in your body I mean I remember when I did it for a couple of days a day or two in Thailand and it was had all this uh, creative energy just build up it was really oh, cool wow. I was like writing and just doing all this stuff and it's quite um yeah it's quite an, an interesting experience um yeah. Mm. was there anything else you wanted to cover in this renewal chamber yeah I'll just have a little look so I think I put um yeah also through touch yeah so I think um a little yeah I think the oxytocin through touch as well so breast foot and womb massage during this time is really nice I love to use a bit of like ylang ylang or geranium or some cbd oil you can mix it all together and that's a really nice practice as well um and I feel um, is amazing yeah oh, so good yeah so good um I've put yeah time and privacy needed I thought also really has helped with my self-esteem and acceptance and I believe this is deeply healing for all of us but especially for people with low self-esteem and self-worth um especially through late diagnosis of ADHD again you know it's one of those things where it's we can be so harsh on ourselves for being lazy so being able to rest at all is such like a no 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 thing um at least in my experience and a lot of experience I've had with speaking with others so I think that yeah having that um that cause and allowing ourselves to really deeply rest and just re-nourish you know um a bit like you know like a plant when it's like nearly dying and then you just like put the whole thing in like a, a sink of water for a day and then suddenly it's fine it's kind of like that <laughs> yeah. that's how I think of it you know just us being you know these plants really with more emotions and go things. sit in water for yeah, a day <laughs> um and then I've also just got intention setting so I put a few questions and these will be in the show notes I put um yeah what yearning do you have clear intentions you want to manifest questions that require clarity place energy here rather than outwards like a mini springtime hold the tension bleed on it bleed on it will be a whole other uh a whole other uh episode in itself but there's a really nice practice called bleed on it where you can uh essentially you can just write it down and you uh bleed on it so you don't know what to think of it you're just allowing the answers to kind of come and again oh, as you... in you have a question and you write yeah it yeah you have a question or a thought or something that you want to explore more um and then yeah yeah like a little mini springtime rest and effort. rest and receive baby dim lights silence or silence or clam music I think it means calm music <laughs> clam the music, music of the clams um, <laughs> <laughs> drop the internal and external demands it's safe for me to rest so yeah really allowing ourselves to kind of drop in and and that is just such a juicy part of the chamber. And I'd say maybe, I think, I mean, I had a time last year, I think it was during the Queen's Jubilee. So I had a couple of days off and my period came on like day one and I was like, yes, thank you. Um, Beautiful. It was like a four day holiday or something. And um, that was so nice because I did just have a good two days where I kind of really pinged between, yeah, kind of letting myself surrender because then you know you surrender and then you kind of get these other things and then they're sort of like oh I should oh this is too much nice feeling I should be doing this thing and then you have to be like no 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 oh Just my god yeah back in the bath or you know go and listen to some music or whatever um and it's really just, yeah, carving that time out for ourselves, however that might be. So again, just, you know, what activities or the massaging and, you know, that's why I have my, where that bear is. <laughs> if anyone's watching this, oh, yeah. that drawer, that's my period drawer. So it's like my period pants, my super oh. comfy, like stuff that just feels so comforting when I'm wearing it. I've Pink. got my oils in there, the cacao, got a little mini whisk for my cacao all the things Do you have the pink there. the yeah. pink um 
Oh, the jogging bottoms. The pink jogging bottoms, yeah. yeah. The um, Wham Christmas jumper is in there because I just love that bad boy. <laughs> when it's summer here and I can't wear it when I'm in my inner winter, I'm like, why? I just like, I just, like, I just want to wear it. It's so warm and sunny. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, just various. And I just keep it in there because it's just easier. Uh, and I know where it is, you know. So I think it's just, it's yeah. It's a great idea. Kind of, you know, so don't give it like it has to be, you know, it's chamber three. It has to be day three. Not at all. It might be that it comes up more in day two. I mean, I, Julia knows I love day two of my cycle when I'm not working because I can really drop in. And I find the deeper I can drop on day two, the more nourished I'm feeling by like day three. Even if I have that little rise in energy in day three, I'm like, no, no, no. We're just going to hold it. We're going to hold it. And I just don't. I just let myself just drop as much as possible. Um quite like venomously heels in the ground kind of style um just so <laughs> yeah. I can really enjoy that and soak it all up so um yeah we've got about four minutes left Julia is there anything that you wanted to ask or clarify or pings into your brain no I think um yeah I'm just getting my head around <coughs> like obviously like you say it's not like <coughs> day x this happens day y this happens but so yeah, the first chamber is the separation. So that's slightly before the period. Then when you start your period, you surrender. Ideally, and yeah. then ideally, <laughs> if you can, um, and you know, give yourself the time to do that as well. Mm. Yeah, and then yeah. and then after that, maybe it's the next day or a couple of days later. It's the renewal time. And if well, you there surrender, are all of these, so all five of the chambers are in menstruation, so they're all in in a winter, so they are ah, all in a few days. Yeah, so it is okay. like, yeah the five chambers of menstruation, so it is all in that in a winter time in the bleed. Um, unless I mean, obviously, right. some people have very very short, but mine's like five days, and I'd say it's really potent between days one and day three, maybe day four. But even yeah. if I'm bleeding on day five, it's not. I don't have that same kind of feeling. I'm kind of that's a more like a crossover day for me. I would say at this point um okay so yeah so and again you know you might um you might you might surrender and then you might feel guilty for doing that so you might try and go off and do something else so again it's that ping pong of you know you yeah. might have the surrender and then you might drop into renewal and home and then you might be like oh gosh and you might try and come out of it and then you're like what if you're like me and then I'm like no 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 just go back to surrender so it's like I just keep I even I'll keep trying because my brain's like no can't do it I'm like no 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 just try again like just practice again I feel like meditation okay. if a thought pops up just like just go back to the breath bring it back kind of just bring it back so it's just letting yourself come back each time um okay you know and then you can really kind of drop in and I find that yeah chambers sort of two three and then we'll talk about four later on um in the next episode but that's where I kind of those 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 three can very much kind of merge around a bit um I mean all five of them can but I really notice it with those three so, so um, two two chambers two three and four yeah chambers can two, merge three, a bit four yeah yeah and I think it's just because that you know trying to not surrender and then you surrender and it's that kind of ping pong um yeah um, so um great mm, yeah oh, so much to learn so much to learn um right then guys I think we'll, we should wrap it up so um wow. thank you everyone for joining um we'll speak to you in the next episode the next episode is the um yeah visioning slash vision quest always very interesting Ooh. um for the next uh for the fourth chamber of menstruation uh thank you always to julia for uh having this conversation with me You're and welcome. um yeah we'll have a little think about what we'll do for our uh our session 13 i feel like there'll be something brewing which will also be the the final chamber it will be the final chamber yeah which i love it's so fun amazing it. <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> Right, I'm going to stop the recording now. So we'll speak to you folks in the next episode of Free Flow. Uh, share it with some friends. Give it five stars on Spotify. Do whatever else you can do to get it out there. We love you. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>